guys, welcome back to my channel. So Halloween is just around the corner. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to put together this fun Halloween photo frame. And this is customizable, so you can use this for like a trunk or tree or trick or treat. It doesn't just have to be for a Halloween party. So before we get started, make sure that you grab this free SVG file from my blog at svgnation.com. And there is a link in the video description that's going to take you directly there, as well as links to the supplies that I'm using in case you want to check any of those out. So once you have that uploaded to Cricut Design Space, um, you are going to have to resize this. So Cricut Design Space has changed something and all the SVG files are coming in small. They're not like this size that they actually are. Um, so you are going to have to resize this and also please note that for any of my past projects you may have to resize them even though in the video I said it's already perfectly sized. Um, but maybe this will change and Cricut Design Space will stop shrinking the files. So anyway, if you see right here, our width is only like maybe eight inches. So go ahead and make sure that this is locked because I am using a 24 by 36 inch board. And that is what I recommend using. Um, but if you want to use like the smaller one, I think it's like 20 by 28. You'll just have to resize it to 20 instead of 24 like I'm doing here. And there'll just be a few spacing adjustments. Like you'll just have probably a little bit more white like between the lines here, which is fine. Okay, but anyway, so we're just going to click on the width here. Again, make sure that this is locked and change this to 24 if you're making the same size as I am. So now it's ready to go. Um, I am going to show you a few things. So let's go ahead and start off by ungrouping these. And I did zoom out so you can see everything. Um, but all of these are on their own layer, all of the text. So you can easily just delete those and add your own text. And for the font, I'm just using Arial. Um, so I'm using like the bold for kind of like these little titles, but then I'm just using regular Arial for the hashtags. So you know you can make this fit like a trunk or tree and put your own hashtags and names or anything like that. And one other thing I wanna show you is I am using a variety of materials. So for like the larger pieces, using cardstock is gonna be the quicker, easier, and cheaper version. But I am definitely not gluing down all of these tiny letters. So instead, I'm gonna be using iron on vinyl for that. So you will see like some purples on different mats and orange, um, and that's just because one of them is with iron on vinyl and one is with cardstock. So one other thing that I wanna show you is right here, I'm going to ungroup this just because it's going to want to cut all of these on separate paper. I don't know why. So just go ahead and put those closed. Make sure that the settings are smaller than 11.5 for the width and height and go ahead and attach those. And that's going to have those cut on the same paper. If you are using cardstock for this, I am using cardstock for these larger orange pieces. And I also want to add this in here. I'm using cardstock for that as well. So let's just select all of those. I am within 11 and a half and 11 and a half. So I'm just going to attach those. Um, if you don't do that, it's just going to cut these on five different pieces of paper. Now it's cutting it on two. So that's just why I did that. Okay. So let's click make real quick and I can go through and show you what I'm cutting on what material. So let's select our mat. Okay. So for the white, I'm using cardstock. So for this black with the larger pieces, I am using cardstock. And then for these sides, I am using cardstock. So see how that put that nicely on two mats right there so I don't have to waste a lot of paper. Okay, but for all of these words, I'm using iron-on, so I do need to mirror this. Um, you can also use adhesive vinyl, but that adds a whole other step of having to transfer it on transfer tape and onto the board. And sometimes that transfer tape sticks a little bit to um, cardstock or the cardboard. So I just think that the iron-on is going to be the easiest and it's super quick. So that's why I'm using iron-on vinyl. Um, and this green, I'm using iron on vinyl, so I'm going to go ahead and mirror this. And then for this black one that has all these small letters, again, iron on. So let's go ahead and mirror that. And this purple right here, I'm going to go ahead and mirror that because I'm using iron on. And then these last two purple, I am using cardstock. Okay, so it's pretty easy to cut. Um, so go ahead and cut everything out. Just pay attention that you put the right paper down, like cardstock or vinyl, and also change your cut settings when you have to switch that out. Once you cut everything out, go ahead and remove it from your mat. And when you're removing cardstock, make sure that you do roll the mat off of the cardstock, especially for like these smaller pieces and especially if you have a st sticky mat. Um, this is gonna help everything come off without like ripping or tearing. And I'm gonna get some of these smaller pieces after I get these big pieces off. So I'm just gonna roll that off. Okay. 
And make sure that you pay attention because there are, for these bottom pieces, there are some small pieces like this heart and also this magnifying glass that you do need to save, which I'm gonna show you how to get off. So roll this off. You're just gonna keep rolling, but you really need to have like the crease where it begins to come off. So sometimes it's helpful to just do the smaller ones after. So once you kind of fold back and see how I can just pop that right off. And that way you shouldn't have any issues with removing any of your cardstock. If you are using the iron on vinyl like I am, then you are gonna have to weed all of that. Or even if you're using the adhesive vinyl, you'll have to weed that as well. Um, so all we're doing is pulling away the vinyl that is not part of the design. And I'll go back in and get all those little small pieces last. When weeding, just make sure that you remember to get all these small pieces out. So just take your little pick and just kind of go through them and grab a hold of them. And then I always trim closely around all of my iron-on pieces um, because that way I can iron more than one on at a time. So that way I can lay a bunch of these down and just kind of iron them on. It goes a little quicker that way. Okay, so guys, I'm sorry. I don't have a very big space here, so you can't really see this board. But what I'm using is one of these tri-fold boards. And if you see that these have these little perforations right here, well, I'm just going to cut on that. And you might even be able to rip on it too and cut, remove both of these sides. And that's just because I had a hard time finding a board that was 36 by 24. And I really wanted that larger size. That way two people could fit in this photo prop or even like three or four. Um, but if you wanna go with a smaller board, I believe they have like a 20 by 28 at Target that you can get. Um, and this was at Target too. This was just $4 at Target. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off these sides. That way I'm left with a 24 by 36 board. All right, so I've cut off the sides, um, which was actually super easy to do um, because it was perforated, so that wasn't difficult at all. So next, I'm actually gonna glue on these purple squares to the top. And right now, I'm really wishing that I had a bigger workspace, um, but I just gotta use what I've got right now. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to see enough to get an idea. But basically, you're just making it look like the picture in Cricut Design Space. Um, that's why I put everything where it goes in Design Space. So you can always just look there. Um, but make sure you do pay attention for how to iron on iron on vinyl if you've never done that on like cardstock before um, because I'll be doing that in just a minute. All right, so next I just glued on the Happy Halloween, which I cut out in cardstock also. And then I glued on all these little bottom pieces and also make sure that you remember to keep those little middles um, because you do need to add in those little middles to glue back on as well. So next you wanna heat up your mini to the lowest heat setting. And if you don't have a mini heat press, you can use a regular heat press um, as long as it's not like one of those that clamp down um, or even an iron. But I definitely prefer the mini with using iron on vinyl on cardstock. So that's just my go-to tool to use. Um, but then after that, you want to go ahead and line up that first, the first two lines, um, the ones that say a wicked good time with the little emojis or whatever you have yours saying and also the location. So go ahead and line those up and get those in place. And if any of the backing, that clear stuff around the vinyl is touching, make sure you trim it more. Um, otherwise, if you don't want to trim it, you can just iron these on one at a time. But I like to iron them all on all together. So I do trim the backing so that I can do that. So once you have that lined up, you're going to go ahead and press it. Um, so just take your little mini. And all you're going to do is for about 25 seconds, you're just going to kind of move around. And you're going to add a lot of pressure. So once you think you've got that pressed, go ahead and peel and see. If you see it coming right up, then it's good. But if you see it start to lift, then peel that down and go ahead and add more heat. Like I say, I never count. I just kind of go by when I see that it's on there really good. When I was peeling that off, I noticed this O peeled up just a little bit. Not too bad that it came off, but I'm just gonna add this parchment paper and I'm just gonna go back over that. I just wanna make sure that it's stuck and it's not gonna come off or and so that's another thing you can do if you see anything start to come off. Um, sometimes I also just like to go over it after I take it off real quick just to really make sure I got that good. You don't have to do it too much. All right, so next we want to go ahead and add this border. 
and you're just going two next to each other and then two on the bottom and you want that as centered as possible and I do want to line that up pretty close to that witch that way we have room for all the hashtags at the bottom and just kind of line this up straight and all four of these pieces are the exact same so it doesn't matter which one goes where and then you're just going to glue those pieces down all right so I've glued all the orange on and I've lined up all the rest of my text and so I'm going to go ahead and press this just like I did before um, just remember if you're pressing everything all at once just make sure that you cut around your carrier and that you have nothing overlapping so that carrier sheets should be really really close to like your text all right so next I'm just gonna add these little candies right in here since I have all that stuff glued down I'm gonna go ahead and put the parchment paper over top and if you guys have any questions um, on what I'm doing or how to make this or how to edit it um, just let me know in the comments and I'll answer them there and also make sure that you guys do like this video and subscribe um, this helps us small creators grow so much and helps me to be able to keep all of these files free for you guys all right so next you just want to take some type of knife I'm using an exacto knife and I'll link to this and you're just gonna cut this middle out um, right on the inside trying to be careful not to cut too much of that orange but it's okay if you do but you're just using that as a line to cut this out and you're just gonna go around this whole square until you no longer have that square in the middle all right so after you cut that middle out you may find that there where there's like little fold marks on here it's a little bit weak when you hold it up like it wants to fold over um, if you hold it like up high it's not going to do that but if you want to hold this anywhere without it doing that then just put a little bit of duct tape on the back over that crease um, or any type of tape I just found that duct tape seems to be the perfect width and strength so I'm just going to kind of put a large piece there and then cut that off and I just happen to have this decorative duct tape so that's why I'm using this but any duct tape works I mean it's on the back nobody's going to see it if you're using a foam board, you're probably not going to have this issue. It's just these little presentation boards have these little folds in them. And so, and that's it guys, your little um, photo frame. It's now ready for your Halloween party, or if you are making it for a trunk or treat, or even a leave on your porch for trick or treating for trick or treaters to have some fun taking pictures. Um, so that's all there is to it. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.